Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of our series. So today we're going to be analyzing the concept and this is a really, really, really important part of the whole uh, process because one of the main mistakes I see people make whenever they're uh, like Tra translating a concept from 2D to 3D is that they forget things. They forget about a specific belt or a specific strap or a specific part of the character. And not only that, they also just like go straight into sculpting, straight into creating things when they really like don't fully understand what's going on. And it's really, really important that we uh, get a good uh, understanding of the, of the character as a whole. So I'm going to copy this guy right here and we're going to go to Krita to do a little bit of uh, analysis. So, uh, as I mentioned before, one of the main things I want to teach throughout the series is the concept of a workflow, right? Like, we want to follow a specific workflow, and we want to divide our character into pieces that we can easily um, sculpt and, and work with. Um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a chapter where we're going to do the base mesh of most of the things of the character. After that, we're going to start refining uh, individual or, what's the word, like, new, new elements from the, from the piece... Uh, what the hell? Local file. Uh, copy image. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's make this smaller. So, yeah. So, what we're going to do is, again, we, we want to analyze the concept and understand what is going on. Now, how many pieces do we need to do? How many parts? It seems like the... Like the size is a little bit either too too big or too small. That's fine. So um, when we take a look at the character, of course, the body of the character is going to be one of the main parts, right? Like we're, we're going to have the main body of the character. But we need to see how many of those parts are going to be connected to the different props and items that he has. So I see that he has an axe, okay? And we also have the, the concept of the axe over here. So we're going to do that separately. He has a tail. That's important. Uh, he's got the legs. On the on the knees, he's got the uh, like the knee guards or knee pads, right? He doesn't have bracers. He he seems to have like bandages on the on the arms and a little bit of an armor piece right there, um, kind of like a interweave between the elements. There's a lot of like straps and, and belts and stuff. So if I were to divide this character again into sections, I would say the body is one, and then the axe is another one. The belt plus the skirt, that's another big section. So that will be a separate mesh. Because we need to understand that eventually we would love this guy to be uh, in a video game, right? Like we want him to be game ready. Um, and even though we're only going to be focusing on the high poly for this one, we need to prepare the high poly so that it's easy to create or bake down into a low poly. So we're not going to do this as a, as a super like indie game character. We're going to do this as a triple A character. So think about like Kratos from God of War or uh, any character from like Dragon Age, Inquisition, stuff like that. So that's the kind of stuff that we're going for, right? Uh, the, uh, the shoulder path, the skull shoulder path, that's another big element right there. And then we have all of the accessories, right? Let's call all the accessories. Rings, the necklace, this thingy is like hanging from the belt, um, the tattoos, the like bandages here, the spiky things on the tail, like all of those things are different. Now, the body, we're also going to divide the body into a couple of different parts. So the head is a really important part that's going to be a separate uh, subtool probably because we want to have a lot of detail and a lot of uh, um, a lot of control. One of the great things is that we do have a lot of like segmented pieces. So that means that we can actually divide the character into multiple high polys and that's going to make um, the sculpting process a lot easier because we can subdivide certain areas more than others, right? Uh, so again, the head is going to be one of them. The hands are definitely going to be another one, one of them separate and we thankfully have the bracers to to help us separate the the hands from the rest of the of the arm and what else what else do we have the legs of course are going to be uh, separated so again if we if we think about dividing the character we're pretty much going to be dividing him like there and there so the torso is going to be like one piece and then the head is going to be a different piece and then each leg is going to be another piece, right? They're pretty much symmetrical. I am going to make them a little bit asymmetrical, especially on the bandages, uh, because it's going to that's going to make things look way way better. Now here's the tricky part: we don't have a back view, right? 
there's no back view. Uh, on this concept, we only have the front view. And even though the sketch and the, and the ambient occlusion pass is really, really clean. By the way, I commissioned this uh, this character uh, several months ago. I was hoping that I was uh, that we we're gonna get the chance to do this tutorial or this series. And, um, and but we don't have a back part now. How important it is? Well, we know it's pretty much symmetrical. I mean, I'm expecting to see the same sort of pattern going around here on the belt. I'm expecting to see these straps from the shoulder guard going all the way around. I'm expecting some bandages here. The tattoo, we, we see half of it, so it's very easy to figure out what the other half is going to be. So even though we don't have a back view, we, we're good, right? Like we, we have enough information to fill in the gaps and make sure we get something that works and looks very, very good. You can see there's a lot of dangly bits right here, like all of those ropes and things like that. All of those are going to be a separate, um, a separate file. And I'm going to show you real quickly why, what I mean by this. Um, most of you are familiar with this game called Horizon Zero Dawn, right? I was, I was amazed when the Horizon Zero Dawn came. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't played the, um, what's the word, the the game itself, but I've seen like the, all of the praises that it got and stuff. And uh, I, I got a chance to see the, the model that they use for, for Alloy, the, the 3D model, the actual 3D model, the in-game model. And uh, one of the things that surprised me the most is that all of the dangly bits, like the, the necklaces, all of this like flappy things, the, the cloth, like everything is model. Most of the times you would expect those to be like baked in into a flat texture on the character. And um, it, it doesn't happen in this case. We actually see uh, like all of the bits that you see here are model. And you can see it here on the high sculpting poly. This one right here, look at that. Like all of the little things, all of the little elements, all of those have their high poly and then they bake all of that thing down into a model. It's a really complex model, but this is what the AAA models are going nowadays. So this is gonna be our mark. We're gonna try to get as close as possible in the time that we have. Of course, usually for productions like this, the time that they uh, spend on a character is way, way, way more than the time that we're gonna be spending. But uh, we're gonna try to get as close as possible to a really, really high quality process. Again, you already saw the result. And, um, and we're gonna get there as, as we move forward with this series. Now that we have this, uh, there's one thing that I suggest you guys uh, do. It, it's not like mandatory. It's not something that you should always do. Or well, it's not that you shouldn't do it. It's just that sometimes there's not enough time to do it. But having a list of all of the things that you need to do is a really nice way to organize your elements. It could be a list like this one right here, or it could be a list, as I mentioned earlier, wrote in a, like a calculating or a spreadsheet so that you know exactly what we're going to be going for. So for instance, we know that there's going to be one horn uh, earring and then one horn bandages and uh, all that kind of stuff. Now, another thing that we need to take uh, into account here is which pieces are gonna be with the character all the time and which pieces could eventually be, like thinking about gameplay, could be replaced by something else. So I think most of the bandages are always gonna be on that character. So we're gonna bake them all down in the same, like uh, in the same bit. But things like the necklace and like this, like shoulder pads and stuff, we definitely wanna keep them as separate pieces uh, and eventually, uh, if we were to do the retopology, we would need to, to keep them as separate pieces so that we don't bake down other parts of the character into into the different elements okay so yeah that's pretty much it guys i think that's all we need to do we have everything ready and uh we can jump into a uh, seabrush now and start working on uh, the base mesh so we're gonna do a very quick block in or block out however you like to call it to get the proportions right for a character and after that we're just gonna jump straight into sculpting we're going to start, as I mentioned, with a workflow, and the workflow I like to follow is we do the anatomy first, so we do a very nice basic anatomy model for a character, and then we go to each of the different regions, the face, the torso, the arms, the legs, and we polish them up until they're into a really good, uh, and really good uh, level. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I'll see you back on the next one.